In this video, we're going to look at how to get 3D models from SketchUp and Google Earth into UC WinRoad. UC WinRoad is this 3D virtual reality real-time graphics rendering environment that you see here. So first and foremost, the main difference between the free version of SketchUp and SketchUp Pro is the ease of exporting your model into different software. So if we look here, with the free version of SketchUp, I can only export a proprietary .skp file. And currently, 3D Studio Max version 2010 and newer has uh, the ability to read .skp files, which you can then convert into a 3DS or FBX file, and UC WinRoad can read those. With SketchUp Pro, however, you get a whole bunch of 3D file formats that you can export to, uh, both of which 3DS and FBX are included. So with the Pro version of SketchUp, you have a direct link with UC WinRoad. And this is ideal because if you don't have 3D Studio Max, a license to this software is much more expensive than SketchUp Pro. So it's a good way to get free building models from around the world into a UC WinRoad folder or file. So let's look at SketchUp. In a blank SketchUp file like this, there are a bunch of ways that I can get pre-made freeware building models into this environment and then subsequently into UC WinRoad. The first way is by clicking this Add New Building tab at the top here. It's going to take me to the Google Building Maker plugin, and I see a bunch of tabs here on a map of the world. Each one of these tabs indicates a city or part of a city in which you can um, download buildings directly into your SketchUp file or create your own very simple photo wrapped 3D models. And so if I zoom in a little bit closer into Phoenix, because that's where our office is here in Arizona, as I get closer, you can see that the map is getting populated with all of these blue and gray dots. Each one of these dots represents a building that's been uploaded into the Google 3D warehouse. The blue ones are buildings that have been accepted into Google Earth, so these are the ones that you actually see in real time when you fly around Google Earth. The gray ones are either ones that are still being considered by uh, the Google Building Maker Review Committee or they've been rejected, but you can still download them for free. So if I click on this one right here, it opens up a model here. I can see why this one was rejected. <laughs> Uh, but you can still download it if you really want it by clicking the download model button here and depending upon when the model was created you'll have different um, uh, file formats that you can download so if this is created back with Google SketchUp 6 then you might only be able to download a, a SketchUp 6 folder if it's a, a file if it's, a, if it's an older model but this one's pretty new so I can download uh, all the way up to a, a SketchUp 8 version so that's one way that I can get free buildings into SketchUp. Another way is by going directly from Google Earth. If I hover over buildings, ones that glow blue are able to be downloaded. And if you click on it, you can see who created it, look at the model, and download it into, uh, into your SketchUp file. If I hover over this one, this is the one I selected because it's a nice and simple model um, and it is available for free, and I can download it into a SketchUp file. So I downloaded it into my file here, which you can see it's a very simple model with only a few textures, which is going to render nice in a real-time environment. So now let's talk a little bit about what kinds of models you should or should not bring into UC WinRoad from SketchUp or from the Google Warehouse. And these tips will pertain not only to UC WinRoad as a real-time environment, but other real-time rendering engines, uh, gaming engines as well. You don't want to have really complex models. As I fly around this one, I can see that there's not a whole lot of faces not a whole lot of geometry, so it should render nice and smooth in a real-time environment. I selected one here, which is an example of something that you should not use, uh, because if I fly around it, you can see that every window is modeled, hinges, holding these glass panels on here, the car models are really high polygon, and even the trees have individual branches and leaves modeled. So this is going to be tens of thousands of polygons, in some cases even hundreds or, or millions of polygons, uh, hundreds of thousands or millions of polygons, and this is not going to render smoothly, especially if you have several of these models populating your real-time scene. So you want to stick with models that are nice and simple, 
like this one, especially if you're working with really large urban environments in UC Wind Road, where you're going to be adding streets, intersections, running real-time traffic, and other things as well. So the last thing you want is your building models to be slowing down the rest of uh, what you're really trying to show. So now that I have a model here, I'm going to bring it into UC Wind Road. And as I said previously, there are two file formats that UC Wind Road will accept. One is the FBX file format, and the other is the 3DS file format. So let's first try 3DS, and we'll see what happens here. I'll get a 3DS export results window that pops up, and it'll tell me how many faces, um, and also how many textures were part of the file. Um, and this is going to be a problem right here. So we can see that there are five textures with this. This is going to reveal a limitation of the 3DS file format. If I go back to my desktop here, I can see that SketchUp exported the 3DS and the associated textures right here on the side. The problem with the 3DS file format and importing one of these models into UC WinRoad is that UC WinRoad will select one of these five textures and wrap the whole building with it. And this is a limitation, as I, as I said, not with UC WinRow, but with the 3DS file format in general. If you open this up in, in something like 3D Studio Max, you'll have to select these, um, these different textures and apply them manually to your building. So we'll see what happens when I try to import it into UC WinRow. I'll go to File, Load Models, Load 3DS, select my 3DS that was exported from SketchUp here, open it, and if I don't see anything straight away in the window here, Chances are there's a scaling issue coming in from Google Earth, so let me try a different scale here. That was the problem, and now I can see I have a giant blue building, which is not what I want. So, what UC Winrow did was select one of those um, textures indiscriminately and apply it to the whole building, which is obviously not what we want. So let's cancel that. Fortunately, UC Winrow will also import FBXs, which more clearly delineate the different uh, textures associated with the model and import it correctly. So I've already gone ahead and exported an FBX from SketchUp and loaded it into my FBX scenes folder here. So just click load and bring in whatever file it spits out from SketchUp and you can see it right here. So I'm going to look at this one. You can see that it came in much more nicely. Uh, this is exactly what I want. This is how it looked in, in Google Earth and this is what I want in my UC WinRoad file. So once I have it in my FBX scene list here, I can exit back out into 3D view, pick a spot, fly around where I want this building model to appear, go to my Add Details button right here on the top toolbar, and I can see my building right here via Corporate Center. Drop it anywhere that I want it in the file, and you can see that it automatically places the building model right on the ground plane. So that's it. That's the easy process of getting buildings from Google Earth into UC WinRoad.